We're live. Welcome everyone to the virtual Excel camp transition age this week. This is our last day for this week. We've got another week planned coming up. It is a plan for success is a plan for you. We are so glad you are joining us today. You are welcome to put in the chat who you are and where you are from. Again, Thank you for joining us to the Virtual Excel Camp Transition Age. A plan for success is a plan for you. We have our lovely instructors today. We have Joanne Chalam, an orientation and mobility instructor. Hi, Joanne. Hey, everybody. Good to see you on Thursday. And Robin Keating Clark, a vision rehabilitation therapist. Hi, Robin. Hello, everyone. And our student intern, Susan Drake from Missouri State University. Hi, Susan. Hello, everyone. And welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us from North Carolina and Nebraska. Glad to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, San Diego and Georgia. Fort Worth, Texas. Glad to have you with us. Hello, Tyrell and Kennedy Faith. Welcome, Darren and Clara. Glad to have you with us, Camille. Wonderful to have you join us today. I am going to turn it over to our instructors. Camille, if you have a question, you're welcome to write it in the chat and we'll work on answering it. The instructors are inside the chat as well. Welcome, Carrie from Connecticut. Glad to have you with us. And now I'll turn it over to your instructors. All right, everyone, this is Robin, and I was frantically typing a message because Carrie is from Stamford, Connecticut, and in Stamford is one of my favorite cupcake places. So I was quickly messaging that in, that important message about favorite cupcake places. Okay, everybody, welcome to day three. We have a fantastic session for you. I wanna give you an update. I am pleased to say, this is very important, everybody. If you are sitting at your desk, you are welcome to do a drum roll with me right now. At one point while playing Mario Kart, I got second place. Many of you know that has been my goal over the last week. It is my specific goal is to do good in Mario Kart. Unfortunately, I drove off a cliff and I ended up placing 10th, but nevertheless, I just want you to know, guys, you can reach your goals. All right, Camille, I see your question right away coming through there. She says, is the week in August an extension of this week? Will it be worth my time? Well, Camille, darling, of course I think it's worth your time. We're having a blast together. We will have a different theme for the week in August, so I do encourage you to join us. We will have a great time. It'll still be about transition, um, some fun things there, but I can give you a sneak preview that Joanne, Susie, and I are already thinking of some fun games we can play. So make sure you join us in August. It'll be totally worth your time. And Camille, if it's not just for you, I will send you a candy bar just to bring you into the loop. All right, let's get down to business. Day three, our topic is self-awareness. I'm typing this into the chat. Self-awareness is our theme for today. Our survey question, and this is what I want you to um, answer in the chat. Um, and Darren, don't worry, I think I just saw your question fly through. I bet Leanne is gonna type you an answer in a hot second. Your survey question for today, what parts of transition planning do you feel you need help with? What parts of transition planning do you feel that you need help with? Is it with goal setting? Is it with identifying what you want to do after high school or preparing, working on skills? Think about this for a second. What part of transition planning 
do you think you need help with? We'd love to hear what you're saying because maybe what we're going to do is take some of this information and use it in our next session. But I'd love to hear what do you need help with? So I love the answers coming through. Getting a job is a really popular one, college. So maybe we can talk about how to work with the Disability Resource Center or getting disability services at a job. That might be another one. Um, independent living skills, ooh, we could definitely help with that. Goal setting. Um, Haven says, I need help with procrastination. Well, Haven, if we could come up with the secret to that, a lot of people would love us, but great ideas. Oh, I really love what everybody is saying. And by answering this question, you are demonstrating self-awareness. Did you know that? By knowing what things you need, you are actually being self-aware right now. So again, Kennedy needs help with finding college, um, independent living skills from Dia, um, knowing what to do after high school from Connor. So we're seeing a really nice theme here. Something else I want you to notice, does anybody agree with something that somebody else said? What I hope you're seeing is you guys have a lot in common, no matter what part of the country you're from, everybody seems to have a common theme. So this is really good for you to know that you're not alone. So we are taking some notes so that we can include this and we can also look for resources to help you with it. So thank you everybody who gave ideas and answered that question. I have one more survey question. Who here liked the mentor session yesterday? I wish it was even longer. Who liked the mentor session? Oh, look at those great responses. It was so fun. Mentors are a great way to help you. And people with disabilities, people without disabilities, short people who are really loud like myself, everybody benefits from a mentor. Everybody can benefit from a mentor. So my follow-up question is, where do you think you can find a mentor? Where, do you, where are some ways? How do you think you can find a mentor? That's our second part. How do you think you can find a mentor? What resources can you do? So one, if you missed yesterday's mentor session, don't worry, they're recorded, you can watch it. But where do you think you can find it? Now, this is more of a specific question. So let's think of specific answers. So Camille is already part of a mentoring program. That's nice. Hannah says asking your TBI. Yeah, going to your teacher and not just your teacher of students with vision impairments. You could go to your English teacher, your school guidance counselor. So yeah, again, let's get specific with your answers. Christian says asking your parents. Yes, great resource. What about your orientation and mobility instructor? What do you think about that? Because your mobility instructor probably knows an adult or a young adult who has gone through something that you're going through. So that could be a great one. I really want to highlight that Joanne mentioned in the chat, Career Connect. That's from AFB, literally the letters AFB. I typed that in the chat window. You could also go to Learning Ally. I'm typing that in the chat for you as well. Robin. Career yep. Connect is now with the American Printing House for the Blind. Okay, so Career Connect. Wow, so I guess this is what we're calling an APH domination. <laughs> Career Connect is APH. So my books, my products, my new t-shirts are all coming from the American Printing House for the Blind, aka APH. Okay, good to know. All right, I love what a lot of people are sharing about mentoring. And I wanted to just ask that question. So if you really liked yesterday's session, you would know where you could turn to because you can find good mentors everywhere. All right, I love everybody's excitement. 
Um, you know what? I think I'm, I'm going to ask Susie or Joanne if you could just put the link to Career Connect into the chat window since some people are asking about it. We'll just put that link directly in there for you. All right. If you are ready to jump into self-awareness learning, give me a yes in the chat. If you are ready for some self-awareness learning, who's got the fast fingers today? Ooh, and I love it with exclamation marks because I am an exclamation mark speaker. Perfect. All right, everybody's with me. So we're gonna be using this word, self-awareness, but that's kind of a big word. Who can tell me in your own words, you can raise a hand for this, or you can tell me in the chat, I want you to tell me, what do you think self-awareness is? What do you think self-awareness is? You can give me a hand and we'll call on you or you can tell us in the chat. What, what, what is self-awareness even about? And you can't define it by saying aware of yourself, just for all of you clever wordsmiths out there. Oh, I love it. Okay, I see one hand. So I'm going to ask Leanne to help us get that going. Susie has put the link for APH Career Connect in there. And then I'm going to read some answers in the chat window. I see two hands up, Leanne. So let's Camille. call on... Oh, Camille? Yes. Hello, Camille. Camille, dear, you can unmute and tell us. I know she can do this. She's in another room of my camps. Wait, can you hear me? Sorry. Oh, it you can. Okay, Sorry. Camille. It, what had, it had me allow something. <laughs> I oh, didn't know. Okay. Um, anyway, so like self-awareness is basically like being cognizant of your actions and like basically like being like, I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> Like basically um, knowing what you're doing and like knowing what's right and wrong about what you're doing. Yes. If anybody agrees with Camille, put in the chat, agree. If you don't agree, it's totally fine. Say disagree. All right, Leanne, who's our next person? Thank you, Camille. I agree with you as well. The next person is, I remembered it last time, Dia? Dia. All right, Dia, we are ready when you are. And um, everybody in the chat, when you hear Dia, tell us if you agree or disagree. All right, Dia, go ahead. Try holding the space bar down. We'll give her another hot second, mm -hmm. which is great because Connor says that there's a lag oh. in the chat. Oh, there she is, I bet, Dia. Voice up. Okay, so uh, self awareness is um, when you're when you're suppose you're planning to do an action, but then you have to ask yourself, hey, is this action good or is it bad? So, Ooh. so before you start doing anything, you have to ask yourself, is this good? Is it bad? Before you start, and if it's something good, do that action. But if it's something bad, then you, do, then you need to change it. Boom. I love that. So I'm definitely going to say agree. Camille emphatically agrees in the chat. Let's see what the chat window is saying. Thank you, Dia. And what I really like is that Dia just gave a different aspect of self-awareness. There's not just one easy definition. There's lots of parts to it. So gold stars for Camille, gold stars for Dia, and everybody in the chat agrees. All right. I love the answer so much that Leanne, can we ask one more person to share? Sonia? All right. Hello, Sonia. And while we wait for Sonia, if you kind of agree, just put agree. But if you really agree, I love how everybody is using the exclamation marks. So you Hello? can capitalize, hey, Sonia, capitalize, Hello? exclamation mark, whatever you'd like. All right, Sonia, this is Robin. 
Go ahead and tell us, what do you think self-awareness is? Um, self, self-awareness? Yes. Self-awareness is when you're aware of your own, like, thoughts, feelings, and what you need, and uh, the thing that Dia said, too, what you know that is wrong or right. Oh, yes, Sonia. I love the specific examples that you provided there. Thoughts, your feelings. Yes. So I'm saying yes with an exclamation mark, all capital letters, because I totally agree. Oh, my goodness. Look at Darren in the chat with multiple thumbs up. Yes. Well, I have to say our three examples is top notch. I'm just going to give a definition but I think we really hit the nail on the head with this one. So self-awareness is having a clear understanding, meaning you know it. A clear understanding of your own feelings, thoughts, abilities, and desires. This is an important skill because you have to know yourself first to know what you want to achieve in life. And I just put that into the chat so you have that as well. So everybody really captured the first part of it, even the answers in the chat, gold stars to everybody. But I want you to remember this part now. This is important because you have to know yourself first so that you can know what you want to achieve in life. And that's what transition planning is all about. It is about your life and you have a say in your life. And it's okay if right now you feel what I'm going to call muddy, meaning you're not very clear. You're kind of like, oh, I'm scared. I want to do this. I don't know if I can do this. I'm realizing that maybe I don't have the skills that I need. All of those things are okay because those things go to your transition plan. That transition plan is meant to target the specific things that you need in order to be successful. Ooh, Tyrell has a nice question. He said, would self-awareness be the same as self-worth or self-confidence? Everybody? Answer that in the chat. If you want to comment on it, give a hand up. I'm going to repeat it. Would self-awareness be the same thing as self-worth or self-confidence? Does anybody have an opinion they would like to voice? I see some answers coming through on the chat. I see some yeses. I see some noes. I see some agreeing. Is self-awareness the same as self-confidence? Hmm, this is an excellent question. I'm gonna keep waiting for the chat to fill up because I know that there is a lag. I like what Whitney wrote, they go hand in hand together. Tiffany says, I think self-worth and self-confidence are part of self-awareness. Like self-awareness is a larger category that it encompasses both of those things as well as it. Ooh, that's where I'm agreeing. I like how Ellen said, I don't think so. Self-awareness is recognizing your strengths and your weaknesses, while self-confidence is having faith in yourself. In a way, self-confidence is based on self-awareness. You should have faith in your abilities. Ellery, I think I said your name wrong the first time, that was brilliant. I don't know if I could have said that any better. So I'm going to type a big agree to Ellery because I agree with what she just said. And in fact, does anybody else agree with what Ellery said? If you agree, you can type agree to Ellery. I just also like that it rhymes. Um, put that in the chat window. Yes, I really agree. So what I like to think of is that self-awareness, self-determination, self-confidence are brothers from another mother. And that's what I see a lot coming through in the chat, that they go hand in hand, but they are different. 
Self-awareness is understanding what you believe in, what your skills are. But self-confidence, just like Ellery said, is believing in yourself, knowing that you can do it. I love the discussion that's happening in the chat. If it's lagging or you're trying to keep up, don't worry. Um, a lot of us are agreeing with Ellery. I like Dia also chimed in. Sarah chimed in with some really nice comments. I really like what you said. They go hand in hand, but they're not the same thing. But there is that relationship. So the more that you become self-aware, the more your self-confidence can increase, the more your self-determination can increase. And just so everybody remembers, self-determination is the official area in the expanded core curriculum. And so self-determination covers a lot of those skills, but they are all related. Well done, everybody. All right, I'm going to ask you one last question before I turn it over to Susie. And this is going to help us to know where are we going with it, okay? So self-awareness has many different aspects. Ooh, I like Tiffany's just popped in with what is self-determination. So before I answer, I want to hear this from you. What is self-determination? You can raise a hand and give a voice answer, or we have a nice discussion going in the chat window. What, in fact, is self-determination? All right, so Hannah's got her quick fingers, and she's already in there with making your own choices. That's one part of self-determination, being able to make your own choices. Whitney says it's believing in yourself and having confidence in yourself another part of self-determination. Faith, determining what you should do, being able to chart your own decisions. Megan says, like if you are determined to get a job or determined to do something, to get a good grade, that's what you're gonna do, that's how you're gonna make it. Camille says, self-determination is the drive to make good decisions to impact your life. The chat window is blowing up with Excellent definitions. I see Leanne's face, so that tells me I've got a hand up. So Leanne, who's got a hand up and would like to share with us? And I was muted. It's Sonia. Oh, Sonia again. Come on up, girlfriend. So um, self-determination, was that the question? Yes, what is self-determination? So self-determination is um, making your own choices, but like for speaking up, learn to speak for what specifically you need and speak, of course, in a nice way. Oh, very nice. I like how you were saying specifically. Again, specifically. Thank you, Sonia. That was a great one. If anybody agreed with Sonia, go ahead and tell us in the chat. Tell us in the chat what you think. All right. Lots of thumbs up. Lots of agreements. I think everybody's understanding that self-determination, much like self-awareness, has many components. In fact, the official components to self-determination are self-knowledge, which is knowing your personal preferences and your needs, knowing your rights and your responsibilities. So as much as you need to advocate for yourself, you also need to know what responsibilities you have in your decisions. And if anybody's agreeing with me, give me a thumbs up or tell me if you agree. It's also being able to make informed choices, meaning studying things out, trying something out so that you know. Guess what else self-determination is? Problem solving. Problem solving and goal setting. You need to be able to know how to get yourself out of a jam or figure out something. And then again, being assertive, going for what you want. So I think as everybody caught on, Self-determination is a really big part of your life. And this last question is, how can self-awareness 
help you with transition planning. So I'm going to copy that question and put it in the chat window because this is going to take us in. We're kind of having a general discussion about self-awareness, but Susie and Joanne are really going to get into some specifics about how these skills really matter. But how can self-awareness help you with transition planning? Your transition planning, not just anybody's, yourself. So go ahead and tell us in the chat, or as usual, you can voice your opinion. All right, Hannah, you can know what you want to do in your life. It, um, Megan says it'll help you to know what kind of job you're interested in and maybe what apartment you want to live in. Remember, transition is not just about a job or going to college. Transition skills are about going to the next phase of your life. And the next phase of your life is adulthood. What kind of adult life do you want? That's a major part of transition planning. I love all of the answers coming through. It's helping you with a plan. It's helping you to know what you're good at. Yes, Haven, I love it. Where you need to improve. So if you're at your transition plan meeting and you hear people talking about, hey, he needs to work on this or she's not very good at that, don't ever feel bad about that. This is about what you need to learn so that you can succeed. Sarah says, I wanna have a great adult life. If anybody agrees with that statement, put in the chat, agree with Sarah. Or say, or oh, I like what Connor said, I do as well. Yes. Okay, guys, I am loving the chat and I could stay with you forever. But I know that Susie and Joanne have some great points as well. I love how everybody is agreeing with Sarah. You want to have a great adult life. Your transition plan, that's the vehicle that's going to get you there. So you need to know your strengths, your weaknesses, you can do it. Okay, I got to stop. I got to turn it way, way over. But you guys have some great points. So I'm turning it over to Susie. And I promise not to talk again, but only in the chat window. So here's Susie. Hey, guys. I'm so excited to be here today and talk to you about some specific things. I know Robin has talked about some really general big picture ideas. Um, about your transition into adulthood, but we are going to talk about some specific things, which means um, some really small, small details that go into your transition plan. Um, and I know that you know what a transition plan is. So I would like for you right now to tell me in the chat um, one thing that you know is on your transition plan. So go ahead and put that in the chat right now. And I know Joanne and Robin are watching that, so they will be answering you back, and as I will too. So go ahead and write that in the chat, one thing that's on your transition plan. It is part of your IEP. So some of the specific things that could be in your transition plan could be um, where you're going to college or steps to get there. So I know when I was in high school, I had to keep a list of all the classes I was going to take to graduate. Um, and so that will be on your transition plan. But some of the other things that will be in your transition plan um, are life skills. I know we talked about life skills. So it could be that um, you need to work on doing laundry independently. Um, and that's a life skill. So that's something that you could be putting in your transition plan that while you are in school or before you move on to adulthood, that you will learn how to independently do laundry. And I, let me tell you, I did not learn how to do laundry until I had to, and that was a mistake. So if you can get help with learning how to do that, you need to do it now, okay? That's my advice. Some other things um, that you could put in there um, is learning how to cook independently. Um, and if you don't know how to cook independently or if you know you're going to need some assistance with that, and I'm sure Joanne's gonna chime in with some of this later because that's an O&M skill as well, um, is where are those resources at? So if you're going to need a meal kit service or things like that, that's fantastic, Camille. You made a meal by yourself. 
for the first time. That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, so things like that. All of those are part of your transition plan. And sometimes we get lost in this big idea of what a transition plan is or what this big word transition is. We forget that there are small parts to it, including learning how to make meals, learning how to do the laundry, um, what classes we need to graduate, and if we're going to a special program, what, um, what is required to get into that program, things like that. All of those small specific things should be on your transition plan, okay? Um, some other things to think about with, start with, Robin says to start with your favorite meals first if you're thinking about learning to cook, which I agree. Right now, Robin's favorite is Oreos, I can tell you. Um, some other things to think about when you are looking at your transition plan is um, money, how you're going to deal with money as you um, leave your parents' home, if that's what your plan is, um, how you're going to order food um, if you're out at a restaurant, um, and it, if you're using text-to-speech. So one of the things I noticed um, today, because I'm at a, out in public today, um, somebody was on the phone taking a phone call and they were having a very public conversation so everybody could hear what their conversation was. Um, <laughs> hey, we're making Oreo milkshakes next week, so I'm excited for that, Ellery. But so, um, and, and you've got to make sure that you're, if you're having a conversation that you don't want everybody to hear it if it's supposed to be a private conversation. Or if you're having texts read out loud, you may not want everybody to hear those. So all of those things are part of self-awareness and could be part of your transition plan. How are you going to access technology um, and all of those things? Man, this chat is blowing up. <laughs> and yes, keep your phone conversations private, take a personal finance class. You guys are all over this, I love it. Um, another thing to think about when you're talking about your transition plan is um, getting ready for a job. I know we kind of talked about that earlier. That's something that we talked about at the beginning, but um, job skills, that's something that can go into your transition plan. Um, how to interview, what type of inter interview skills you need, what to wear to an interview, and yes, Robin, you are absolutely right. Doing chores around your house are soft skills for getting a job. Um, but those are all things you can practice at school. Um, and you can practice an interview at school. I have done that with students before, and I know your teachers will be happy to do that with you. So as you are thinking about your big picture, whatever your big goal is. So if your big goal is leaving the house or moving on to something else, Whatever your big goal is, tell me in the chat right now. Um, so whatever your big goal is, you've got to break it down into the small things, your, your very specific goals, and all of those specific goals can go onto your um, transition plan. So Sarah's big goal is to move out of her parents' house. Kennedy wants to be a meteorologist. So Kennedy may want to take all the science classes she want to, want or can in high school. And then she may have to explore what colleges are out there that offer meteorology. And all of that needs to be in her transition plan. And while she's doing that, she may need to work on some orientation and mobility um, so that she's prepared to go out and live independently um, while she's in her college program managing public transportation. You know, that's hard, Ellery, in my town because where I live, we don't even have public transportation. Um, so when my students are learning how to do that, we have to take them by train to about an hour away. And then they have to learn how to ride the bus system or the train system in a, a big city about an hour away because we don't have public transportation in my hometown. So that's very hard for my students. Um, so yeah, you guys are, have, you have a great ideas about where you wanna go, but 
it's very important that when you're thinking about those things, we put specific ideas in your transition plan. Um, and I think that transition can be very, very easy um, to overlook. And it's very, very, um, it's sometimes something that when we look at it, it's boring pieces of paper. Um, and Robin's right that there are um, a lot of different options. There's online, community college, there's technical programs. There's even, there's a program at the technical school, um, we call it vocational technical, at my, in my town, that's just for computers. They do computer repair, computer networking, all of this stuff that I'm not good at. So those are things to think about. Um, and you know, you don't have public transportation either. Hey, girl, I, I get it. I live way out in the country and we got nothing. Um, and you know, Connor, I understand online school can be a little daunting, but all of those specific things are things to think about when you are looking at your transition plan. And I am so, so impressed with um, all of their big picture ideas, but these are some things that um, will give you some guidance or some um, focus when you're looking at your transition plans and your IEPs for next year. Just remember that your transition plan is part of your IEP, that you get to sit down and work on that and it's supposed to be based on what you want to do and where you are going um, with your future. And a huge part of that um, is what Joanne's gonna talk about next, and that's orientation and mobility. And she is a pro because she's done orientation and mobility for a long time. So Joanne, I will let you jump in and talk all about that. Sorry, I had to unmute. My spacebar didn't want to move. Thanks so much, Susie. Um, so it's great that you have all these goals and ideas, but my question is, do you know before you go, before you go to college, before you go to the store, how are you going to get there? So throw that in the uh, chat room. Tell me, how do you get around now? Do you rely on rides? Do you use ride share? What ways do you get around now? And if you live in a rural area that doesn't have a bus system, hmm. Depending on other people to drive you, okay. All right, so my next question, I'm gonna read some more. People have get rides, public transportation. Has anyone heard of ride sharing? Walking, driving, Uber, Lyft, all right. Family and friends, hmm. So, some people live in the country, all right. So, let's say that you move to a different city. You move from the country to the city. You now have public transportation that you have to use. How are you gonna figure out how all that works? How are you gonna know if your ride will take you to the store, if it will take you to college, if it will take you to your job? How are you gonna get around? How are you gonna know all that? You can go to the city website, Google Maps, call ahead of time. Who are you gonna call though? Are there apps you can use? Be prepared, it's important. All right, so there are lots of apps out there. If, they have public, if there's public transportation, there's Uber, there's Rideshare, there's all kinds of things out there. Um, but let's talk about privacy for a minute. So you're looking it up, you're finding out where you're gonna go. So you wanna go to the college because classes are starting. Um, how, when are you gonna figure out how you're gonna get there? Do you figure out at the bus stop? Before you get to the bus stop? while you're on the bus?
Do you practice going there? Excellent idea. Do you practice with a friend? Do you practice, you know, with somebody you know? Think about it. You plan before you get there. If you're at a bus stop and there are people you may not know, would you want to have them listening to your route to get there? Plan the whole route before you start the route. Excellent. Does anyone ask their own M instructor if we could practice the route? Put in the chat room and tell me, has anyone like gone through an entire route with your own M instructor? Yeah, and you have to figure out how you're going to get to your school before you arrive at the bus stop. Yep. Excellent thought. Should you tell anyone if you're doing this independently? Um, an O&M instructor, what is it? So someone who t works with people who have visual impairments and teaches us how to travel, whether that's traveling crossing streets, learning how to use a cane, or practicing bus routes. Now, whoever is using their apps, think about it. How can you keep track of the stops if you're on a public bus um, and know how to get off? What are some things you could do? GPS, mm-hmm. Do any of the apps tell you the bus? Ask the driver, what else could you do? Count how many stops until you need to get off at your stop, good. And how are you going to tell the driver that you need to get off? Pay attention. All right, you can ask them. You could, but sometimes the bus drivers are busy, so you have to be independent. So those are great ideas. You can use the GPS. You could count the stops. Hopefully there aren't too many because can, you can get tired of counting if you have 30 stops. Um, you, can, you definitely need to pay attention. If you know, if you can see the landmarks, you can use that. You can use a map. There's all kinds of ways to know where you're going. You can sit close to the bus driver. And definitely don't zone out and listen to music. Pay attention. All right, so let's figure out, all right, you can't get to where you're going through the public transportation, but you can use ride sharing. Ride sharing would be like a transportation network company. Has anyone ever heard of Uber or Lyft? Put in the chat, work, chat room, not, sorry, if you've heard of Uber or Lyft. Sort of like carpooling, but it's more like ride sharing. So in the chat room, tell me how you would order a vehicle through Uber or Lyft if you wanted to get a, a ride. What do you need to do? You order through the app, good. Now, request for more ride. Now, where should you do that? Should I, you know, should you go outside and announce to the world that, ah, I need a ride to my college? Where should you announce all that information or set up all that information? Should it be inside or outside? Think about it. Who thinks inside? In a private space? Inside, definitely. You want to make sure you can order your ride inside because if you're outside, well, it just might be a little safer. So you also want to check your ride. Right. Hey, jo hey Joanne, it's Robin here. 
since everybody's really talking about using Uber and Lyft, does, can we ask if a student wants to share their experience? Because it might seem like a scary thing to do, but I have a lot of students that are now using Uber and Lyft. So would that just be okay if, if you would like to share your voice opinion? Um, who's ever used Uber or Lyft? Do we have any students that have used it or want to? Oh, Camille. Um, Camille and Connor, would you, ooh, Ellery, oh, here it comes. Um, would you be willing to share your experiences with us? Just real fast. You have Tyrell who's raised his hand. All right, Tyrell. Hello, everyone. Hi, Tyrell. Um, so personally, for me at least, I would say that using Uber or Lyft isn't that scary. You just need to make sure that you that the ask that the um, driver asks for your name and just make sure you get into the right car stuff like that it's not dangerous not too dangerous at least all right so you had a good experience and it you know with everything there's always a level of danger but your self-awareness yes. skills help Definitely. you to know things I see some more hands coming up. Thank you, Tyrell. Hannah? Oh, I've Hannah used has fun experience with it. <laughs> yeah, I've actually ridden on Uber with Robin. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it in Canada. And in yeah. Canada, the cars were much smaller than what they were in the United mm -hmm. States. And we had to get seven people and we had to keep ordering multiple Ubers in order to fit people into and the suitcases car. and suitcases. Um, but Hannah, um, what's an important skill that you need to remember that, that you needed to remember um, when you used it? Um, it's okay to talk to the driver, but make sure you, if you ask you like personal information, just don't talk yep. about that. And that's what Joanne was talking about with privacy. And remember yes. with Uber, you can rate the driver. You can also follow mm -hmm. along on the map if you have vision and you can see where you're going. That was a great one. Joanne, we have four people with hands up. Would you mind if we let one more student share an experience? Sure, but I just wanted to add one quick thing because it's on topic. If you're going to take Uber, did you know that you can share your ride with a loved one? You can tell them where you're going. Great point. Dia? We know she's coming. It just takes a hot second. It does. So if it, while... While we're waiting for Dia, if you want to share any tips about using Uber or Lyft or traveling. Um, sure. oh, there she is. Voiceover. There you go, Dia. I just had to use my voiceover. I'm we so know. Good girl. Honestly, I have not actually used Uber myself, but I have used it with my family. Okay. And so, was it a smooth ride? Were you left in a ditch? Did it work out for you? Um, I think overall the rides were pretty smooth. Okay. Would you ever consider doing it again in the future? I think so. Okay. Well, those were some really great stories. So thank you everybody for sharing. Um, I'm going to throw it back to Joanne. I was just so excited to hear everybody's thoughts and experiences. Um, thanks, Sarah, in the chat. She's got some really great stuff. Um, Camille, yes, you are exactly right. Uber and Lyft both have that feature in there. So great, great point. Excellent. And just what I was going to talk about, make sure that you check before you get in that car. Make sure you know that it's your Uber driver or your Lyft driver or any driver. You know, make sure that the information matches up. All right, and this is a good time to be a backseat driver. Even if you are the only person other than the driver in the car, it's a good idea to be a backseat driver. 
So sit in the back. And I know it sounds kind of strange, but sit in the back because you need to think of your safety. Um, always wear your seat belt. I know I'm preaching to the choir. And like I said before, check your ride, share with loved ones, know your pickup and drop off. If you're checking and tracking your ride and you feel like your drop off is not where you think you are, double check, talk to your driver, make sure they drop you off in the right place. Think about safety. And think about the weather too. If you're in Canada and it snows like crazy or it's raining like crazy, you wanna be dropped off next to the entrance of a building, not the side of the building, the entrance. So here where I am, it rains like crazy. So I wanna be dropped off near an entrance where I can get my umbrella and run inside. So think about safety. All right. So let's talk about a few other things. And there's some other comments. All, all, Robin says all the rides are monitored and they do a good job with safety. Yes, they do, but you have to be self-aware. You have to know your surroundings, what's around you. Where are the landmarks? Where are you going and where did you come from? Um, so, Robin, are there other people who want to share their information? Oh, yeah. I think if we've got a little time left, this is where we're going to need everyone to jump in and help with, how about we make some tips and tricks for not just self-awareness, but the point about privacy and maybe some street smarts while traveling on a bus or public transportation. So let's hear your best suggestions for, let's talk about, let's talk with cell phones first. So cell phones, what are some tips and tricks for using your cell phone while out in public? What are some tips and tricks that you can use? I know we were chatting about this, about having multiple pairs of earbuds. Yes, your screen curtain. And you know what, can I ask, I know Connor's there. Can anybody explain what the screen curtain is? You can raise a hand or throw it in the chat. Um, but tell us what the screen curtain is so that everybody knows what that is. Do we have some hands, Leanne? Camille has her hand raised. Oh, Camille, come on up and tell us, girl. Can everyone hear me? Yep. We can, Camille. Okay, so like basically um, a screen curtain. So like when you have voiceover on, a screen curtain, it, it, it's a basically like, it's like a, so if you have vision and use voiceover, which is me, um, it's, it has a, it's like a black, like, mm -hmm like thing that like goes over your phone so like your screen is black and you just hear like your voiceover and you can't like see the screen you just hear the voiceover. Yeah. Awesome that's perfect and you know what I think Hannah wrote in the chat how you can turn your screen curtain on so if anybody else wants to comment how you use that having multiple pair of earbuds because you never know when you need them. In fact, I have lots of students that travel their whole day when they're outside, one earbud in at all times. And remember that policy, everyone. Instead of putting two earbuds in and tuning the world out, think one earbud in all the time so that you can be auditorily aware of what's going on around you. Don't zone out and do double earbuds. Keep that one ear. So that will really help a lot of students really do that. You can do earbuds, AirPods, Beats, whatever you like. So that's an important one. Alexander says, make sure you contact people before using Uber so that you can make sure that you're safe. Yeah, and in the Uber app and in Lyft with all ride shares, you should have a picture of yourself. There's a picture of the driver 
There is the information of their license plate, their car. You can verify all of that information every time you take a ride. And I love Joanne's idea of, if you're gonna start doing that, share your Uber app with your parents. Um, and that's just a great street smart for everybody. I travel a lot to different places and my husband always knows my Uber, he knows my diabetes information so that somebody else is aware. Okay, what about being on that bus by yourself? There's a couple of cardinal rules that you should always do no matter what. Does anybody have any tips about using the bus? I, of course, wait, let's see, do we have any hands popping up? Not oh, yet, but you're talking about a public bus. A public correct? bus. We are Darren. On. So I just want to say that's my first car. I think if you caught this in the chat, my mom is blind. I was raised my entire life on a city bus. Oh, I see some hands. Yeah, Darren. Oh, Darren's got some good stuff. Share with us, Darren. Um, hello. Yes. Um, so when traveling on a public bus, I would recommend you call ahead of time to ensure that you have the correct information on your destination. Um, I'd also recommend you plan your destination mm -hmm. um, so that you know where you're headed. Yes. Now, sometimes calling public transportation services is a little awful, but you can yeah. use the website and you can use the app. Many places today have those, but you're totally spot on, Darren, with traveling. Um, Kennedy and Anna have all shared about where to sit. Yeah, a lot of people wanna go sit in the back and zone out, but when you get on that city bus, you wanna make sure you're in a position where you have the power, meaning you can oh, Robin, the stops. Oh, go ahead, Susie. This is one of the ways we test our students. So okay. if we're going up to the city and riding on public transportation, we'll have one of our other teachers meet us there that they don't necessarily know. Mm -hmm. And we'll have them go chat up the student on the bus. And if the student responds, that's one, like, we'll have a big conversation about public safety, whether they should be talking to strangers. And of course, it's very controlled because it's, it is a teacher and they're okay, but you guys should not be talking to anybody that you don't know on the bus if you don't recognize their well, voice. Well, I think that car. goes into knowing something important. So. If somebody's like, hey, is that the stop right there? And you're like, yeah, that is. Those are things that you can engage with. However, if you have somebody asking you, how much money do you have? What's your social security number? <laughs> yeah, and that's if what we ask them. Where do you question, live? If there is a question that gives you butterflies, yeah, that's weird. But just so you know, people that take public transportation all the time might chat on the bus but you'll know the private questions that you shouldn't be answering. So that's really important. If somebody asks what time it is, you can tell them what time it is. If somebody asks, are you alone traveling by yourself? Yep. Just imagine Robin's creepy voice asking that question to you. That's a red flag for creepy question. Um, Hannah says, is it okay to talk to people with canes on public transportation? Like, do you, what kind of cane do you mean, Hannah? Um, it's okay to be friendly. Just don't give away personal information. Right. I think what we're talking about is like your address, your phone number. Are you alone? Are you traveling by yourself? We don't want anybody to get the idea that they could steal you. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Putting yourself in a good position always matters. It goes back to these cardinal, cardinal important things. Be aware. Don't just zone out. Be aware. Even if you're in a building, know what room number you are in a building. Always know where you are. And I know everybody, we have to be aware and keep ourselves safe. But sometimes we can err that the world is okay. You can go out. Blind people are living a successful life every day they are living in new york city they're living in florida they're living in north dakota they're living everywhere but they're living there because they know self-awareness good cane skills and they're thinking ahead have your b plan who do you call if you're lost what can you do 
That's what we want to think about. Where do we want to go? What do you oh, need? Go ahead, Joanne. Sorry. Um, just one more thing to add. Have your B plan, have your C plan, have your D plan. Mm -hmm. And in this day and age, make sure you have a backup for your cell phone. If that battery goes kaput, make sure you have a way to charge it. We are very dependent on our phones these days. Yeah, and, and a lot of people carry, carry around a little pocket juice. Mm -hmm. The little a portable battery packs. I know that's actually what I do when I'm traveling alone. Oh my goodness, it is time right here. We have had so much fun, and I hope you guys have too. So I'm going to let Joanne and Susie say goodbye to you, but this is Robin saying, I really hope to see you at our next session uh, in August. It's been super fun. Happy to see my Connecticut students, Utah. It's been great. All right, Joanne. Hello, everybody, and goodbye. So glad that you came today. Uh, for those in the US, happy 4th of July tomorrow. And for those from Canada, I hope you enjoyed your Canada Day. See you in August. Back hey to guys, you, it's Susie. Um, I am so glad I got to spend the week with you saying goodbye, signing out, and I will see you in August. Thank you all so very much. Bye.